Void Mage Gamer is now partnered with Flipside Gaming. So you can use the promo code on their website, all caps, Void Mage, to get 10% off all orders, $10 or more. It's a great way that you can support both Flipside Gaming and Void Mage Gamer's channel. Hello guys, welcome back to another video. This time we're going to change it up a bit. I'm sure a lot of you are aware there is a new format that's been gaining a lot of popularity called Oathbreaker. This is going to be my first deck. Being able to play test it a little bit, got a sense of the power level, and it's quite fun. Not quite the cash grab that Brawl was, and a lot more potential than Tiny Leaders. It offers you a lot of different possibilities because instead of just dealing with one commander-like figure, you also have a signature spell. So your Oathbreaker is basically your commander, and your Oathbreaker is any Planeswalker with the exception of Sahili the Gifted, because according to the Oathbreaker ban list, you just can't go with her. Your signature spell can be any instant or sorcery so long as it's not on the ban list. Feel free to look it up yourselves to get familiar with it but the ban list is a little less restrictive in some areas a bit more in others you're not going to see something like soul ring this time around but you're also going to see profit accrue fix so it's a little all over the place and it's still very much in its infant stage as a format so what might be incredibly broken is kind of unknown to me i mean we have to really get to play this format a lot in order to judge it fairly but this is my first experience with it with this deck my Oathbreaker of choice is Sorin, Vengeful Bloodlord, and the signature spell I chose to go alongside him is Anguished Unmaking. This is just a 60 card deck, these are two of the cards, and both of these act as the commanders for the deck. To put it in terms easiest for commander players to understand, if they have no prior knowledge of Oathbreaker, how the signature spell works is that if you have your Oathbreaker, your Planeswalker, out there on the field, you can cast it, and the tax for playing these multiple times is the same as it is for a commander, where you have to pay an additional two, and that goes for the signature spell. One thing to note here is that the signature spell has to go back to the command zone. It's not something you can abuse, return back to your hand from the graveyard, it has to go back Back there so something like buyback is useless. I chose Anguished Unmaking and Soren Vengeful Bloodlord because I just think it's a pretty decent combo. I'm new to this format like I'm sure a lot of you are so I wanted to go for something pretty simplistic but also pretty new and refreshing. Soren Vengeful Bloodlord has a passive which I highly recommend you consider choosing one of these from War of the Spark because it offers that dimension that commanders as far as creatures have where they're a lot more than just their abilities. Their loyalty abilities and then they're done for the rest of the turn. This guy gives all of your creatures and planeswalkers lifelink as long as it's your turn. So making combat incredibly useful. You start out at 20 life in this format, so anytime you can give your creatures lifelink, gain life off of your planeswalkers, it's going to make your time a lot easier. You're going to see a lot more aggro decks in this format because you're only at 20 life. His plus 2 is pretty good, deals 1 damage to target player or planeswalker. You do gain a life off of that, and it's a plus 2, which is pretty decent because his minus X is return target creature card with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield becomes a vampire in addition to its other types. And we all know Anguished Unmaking, it's a really good spell. Wanted to kind of balance it out there. Sauron's plus two isn't that good when it comes to removal, so I wanted to get something that could at least threaten other people's planeswalkers. There's also the Elder spell. I didn't really feel like playing that because I thought it was too easy, it would make me a target. And Anguished Unmaking, of course, hits more than just planeswalkers. But this is what you want. You want relevant relevant removal for planeswalkers in the format and you're going to see a decent blend in my deck of control as well as powerful grinded out creatures might as well get out of the way my control package these are my instants and sorceries that are going to put in a lot of work stopping my opponent's stuff don't need to play a whole bunch because this is just a 60 card deck as far as instants go i play swords to plowshares d spark and return to dust Pretty much covering my bases here. D Spark is a relatively newer card that is going to deal with a lot of cards in the format, a lot of Planeswalkers that are CMC4 or greater. All for just two mana. It's going to do a lot of the things that you can already do with Anguished and making. So more consistency when it comes to removal is never a bad thing. Sorceries, you're going to see a lot of board wipes. I've Kaya's Wrath, Fumigate, like I said before, gaining life in a format where you start at 20 is so valuable. Both of these are going to allow us to do that while also getting rid of our opponent's creatures. Merciless Eviction, being able to hit Planeswalkers is so important in your removal. So if you're going with a black-white Oathbreaker deck, you should probably consider Merciless Eviction over other 6-mana Wraths or something like Austere Command that can't hit Planeswalkers. So the fact that you could exile all Planeswalkers for 6-mana is a huge upside to this 
this card. And might as well get it out of the way, I'm playing Vampire Tribal here. So New Blood is my only other sorcery, and I think it's just fantastic you get to steal an opponent's creature by tapping one of your vampires. You can of course make it into a vampire, have that other vampire synergy going for it. So in addition to being able to cast Anguished and Making, as long as we have Soren Vengeful Bloodlord out there, we have a ton of removal, a ton of ways to keep our opponent's Planeswalkers in check. Now we go on to the creatures, and probably what I think is the best reason to go with vampires in Oathbreaker are two creatures, Vampire Hexmage and Thief of Blood. These two just wreck Planeswalkers. Pretty average in Commander because you're only going up against Planeswalkers so often since they're the bread and butter of this format. If you can just one-shot a Planeswalker just by playing a creature or sacrificing a Vampire Hexmage, you don't even have to use your Anguish and Making. You could just leave up the mana for it and threaten your opponents. The benefit of playing Vampire Hex Mage, of course, is being able to sacrifice her and only having to minus two Soren Vengeful Bloodlord to get her back. Really sweet interaction. Maybe not the most competitive Oathbreaker deck, but for that reason alone, you have to say that's a pretty decent combo. Speaking of recursion, we want to go for some really awesome vampires that are going to try to cover our bases, give us a little bit of everything. Bloodline Necromancer is going to give us a vampire back from our graveyard to the battlefield. Already has lifelink, but trust me, there's a ton of vampires that don't that are going to be even better because they do. If we're going back to removal, vampires have some pretty good ones. Vona, Butcher of Magan, if you're looking to just get rid of a non-land permanent off of gaining all your life, either from Sorin or your other vampires. Paying 7 is not that big of a deal. Getting rid of non-land permanents is essential. And we of course have Patron of the Vein. Not only do you get to kill a creature, you get to exile them, and you get plus one plus one counters on your vampires whenever that happens. So a huge threat, ton of plus one plus one counters you can get. And we are talking about vampires, what you see a ton of in vampire decks are things like Blood Artist, Cruel Celebrant, and Falcon Wrath Noble. Reasons to tell your opponent, hey, you probably don't want to attack me. I'm gaining even more life off of these. And to be a little bit more flavorful in black-white vampires, we have somewhat filler cards like Drana's Emissary, Cliffhaven Vampire, they're just there because they synergize with Lifelink, Regal Bloodlord, and Tithe Drinker doesn't have to be super oppressive, but having a synergy with life gain is going to make it a little bit more fun to play the deck. And we want to speed it up a little bit, get some more cards to our hand. We could do that with Twilight Prophet while also draining our opponents of life. And Champion of Dusk is an all-star in a deck where we can gain a bunch of life. Don't really care about losing it to draw that many. And we have some pretty awesome creatures. Nothing I would consider a huge win con, but these are definitely ones that could win you the game if you have a decent board state. Sanctum Seeker, you don't even have to attack a specific opponent. Just whenever your vampires attack, each opponent loses a life and you gain one life for each one of those vampires. We have the awesome Bloodline Keeper. Being able to transform him means that our vampires are going to get even bigger, and he just keeps making more vampires. Even more win cons, we have to look at our enchantments. Cover of Darkness is a must-have in this deck. Choose a creature type, you're going to choose vampires. Creatures of the chosen type have fear, so unless your opponents have a lot of artifact creatures, they're likely screwed. And I love Radiant Destiny because we're probably going to have Ascend. We have a lot of vampires in the deck, 24 in total. It's like a basic anthem if you don't have it. But once you do have the city's blessing, they also gain vigilance. So in addition to the other keywords they have on your turn, like lifelink, they can also stay untapped to block. And pretty good synergizing equipment that we have here in Blade of the Blood Chief and Heirloom Blade, making our vampires bigger when other creatures die. Very efficient, costed equipment. And Heirloom Blade is just going to make it easier for us to find another vampire and keep our game going. And as far as lands go, you don't need anything super special. Just play typical black-white lands for mana fixing and a Cavern of Souls if you have one. Making your vampires uncounterable is pretty sweet. But other than that, this is pretty much the deck. 60 cards total. A little bit more competitive, a lot quicker. Got to play with this deck in this format for the very first time, and I fell in love with it. As a format, I think it's definitely more viable than some of the other possibilities that we've had in the past. Brawl was obviously a joke, Tiny Leader's obviously a joke, not going to last that long, not going to gain a lot of popularity, but a lot of people like this. A lot of people are willing to play it, kind of like Commander. So if you haven't given it a chance yet, just take a look at my deck, I'll have it in the description.
You guys have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next video.